Senator Blunt. Th thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, Chief Sund, if I have your testimony correct this morning, I think what I'm hearing you say is based on the intelligence you saw on January the 3rd, after that on January the 4th, you decided this was going to be a different kind of protest than we you'd seen in November and December, and that's when you asked for an expanded perimeter and National Guard assistance. Is that correct? So the information we received, yes, it was very similar to the previous assessments. It was just a little bit more detailed. Uh, we had been analyzing kind of how we responded to the previous MAGA marches uh, and decided to expand the perimeter. Really, when you expand a perimeter as large as we expanded it, it creates a, a large area you have to defend. And that was the primary reason, knowing that these protests were coming here. We were the focus of the protest and the expanded perimeter, and we knew this was going to be a long day. The, the um, uh, so did you know from the time you expanded the perimeter that you were going to have to have more help in li on all likelihood to defend that perimeter than, uh, than your force would be able to provide? We, we, we knew the additional uh, support would be, we could, we could utilize the additional support, yes. So why did you believe that you needed the approval of Mr. Irving and Mr. Stinger um, to request assistance to the National Guard? That's, that's, that's always been the case. We only requested the National Guard for very specific uh, events, usually the inauguration, and that requires a declaration of emergency from the Capitol Police Board to utilize those resources. Do you know if there's a statutory requirement for that? I could look into that and get that to you as a follow-up if you'd like. I don't, I don't know that there is, but I, I do know that if you get the approval to expand the perimeter and you don't have the assistance to do that, that's obviously... A problem. Why didn't you contact the third member of the police board, uh, the architect of the Capitol, Mr. Blanton? Uh, thank you for that question, sir. Um, you, my conduit to the Capitol Police Board was usually through the House and Senate Sergeant Arms. They were the ones usually having the communications with the department, especially law enforcement uh, related uh, issues. They're both law enforcement and also the fact that Mr. Stinger at the time is the Capitol Police Board uh, chairperson. Uh, but usually outside the monthly um, Capitol Police Board meeting that we'd have, uh, unless it was a um, issue specific to the architect um, regarding you know building structure or something like that, uh, my conduit was regularly uh, the House and Senate Sergeant Arms. Why, why do you think the architect of the Capitol is on the police board? As one of the voting members and providing oversight. But apparently not enough oversight that you thought you needed to involve him in the conversation. Uh, like I said, our, my usual conduit was going through the, the House and Senate Sergeant Arms. You know, that's already two people I got to go to, you know, you know, going to three. You know, in the future, I guess, if that's uh, something that's going to be, you know, you know, that we'll implement, then I will implement it. But that's, I was just following my usual uh, course of action. So, Mr. Irving and Mr. Stanger both, uh, let's start with Mr. Irving. Uh, why was the request for National Guard assistance not approved at the same time you approved the expansion of the perimeter? Mr. Irving? I think you're muted, Mr. Irving. Now you're definitely muted. Okay, now you should be fine. Go ahead. Am, am I okay now? You're yes. Okay now. Thank you. Thank you. I apologize for that. Senator, I did not take the call uh, from Chief Sund on the 4th as a request. Chief Sund called me to tell me that he had received an offer from the National Guard to provide us 125 unarmed troops to work traffic control in the perimeter of the Capitol. Shortly after that discussion, I said, let's include Sergeant at Arms Stanger as chair of the board and another senior official with, with quite a bit of experience. The three of us talked it through. And during that call, the number one question on the table was, did the intelligence support it? Did the intelligence support that additional offer for those 125 troops? Did and you, did you so, discuss this with anybody except um, Sergeant Armstanger and Chief Sund? No, it was just this one phone call. And during that call, we all agreed that the intelligence did not support the the uh, troops and collectively decided to let it go. Michael Stenger then said, how about we put him on standby just in case? And that's what we ended up doing. But 
okay. from what I remember, uh, everyone was very satisfied right. that we had a robust plan, security plan, that was consistent with the intelligence that we had at the time. Mr. Stinger, why, why, did, uh, why did you think that they, the troops were on standby? Uh, I they must have been standing up. way away from where we needed them if it took hours to get them here. What did that mean they were going to be on standby? What I did when I, when I spoke to the chief, when the chief brought up to me uh, this uh, attempt to get the National Guard, and, I, and it apparently it wasn't going uh, forward, uh, I suggested to him that uh, he reach out. He knew the National Guard commander from his previous uh, work in the uh, uh, Metropolitan Police Department. And I suggested that he reach out to the National Guard commander for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them was uh, I had either read in the paper or heard on the news that the National Guard uh, in D.C. was rather reticent to engage uh, with the demonstrations at this time because of the uh, issues that had arisen during the White House uh, demonstrations of a month ago, and that uh, that we need to make sure that the that the National Guard was engaged in this and that they would be willing to. Uh, well, do you think you did make sure that they were engaged and would be willing? I'm going to have to go to another one more question here. Did you think they were engaged and would be willing if called on? Yeah, that, that's what I think, uh, what I asked right. the chief to turn um, from uh, the general. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Irving, you said in your testimony that when asked for National Guard assistance, you approved it. Uh, Mr. Sun stated that he asked for the National Guard assistance at 109, and you approved, it was approved at 210. Why would it take an hour to approve National Guard assistance on your part in that moment of crisis? Mr. Irving. Senator, from my recollection, I did not receive a request for approval for National Guard until shortly after 2 p.m. when I was in Michael Stanger's All right, office. Let's, let me get that straightened out. Mr. Sun, do you know when you asked for National Guard assistance? Was it 109 or was it 2 p.m.? It was 109, sir. 109. And who did you ask for assistance at 109? It was from uh, Mr. Irving. I believe he was in the company of Mr. Stinger at the time as well. And Mr. Irving, why would you not remember that? Senator, I have no recollection of a conversation with Chief Sun. At that time, I was on the floor during the Electoral College uh, session. And my conversation with Chief Sun in that time frame was shortly before 1.30 when I recall he was describing conditions outside as deteriorating, he may in fact be submitting a, a request and I carried that forward. And um, that was as much as I can tell you, I have no phone record call from Chief Sund. Did the you, first record I, did you discuss that, that request at 109 or whenever you got it with anybody else or did you and, and Mr. Stenger make that decision then? No, I did not get a request at 109 that I can remember. The first conversation I had with Chief Sund in that time frame was, a rent, was at 128, uh, 130. Uh, and and at that, in that conversation, he indicated that conditions were deteriorating. He might be looking uh, to, for National Guard approval and approval of, of our mutual aid agreements with local law enforcement. And I went to Mike Stanger's office awaiting an update. Well, this, this is a time, Mr. Irving, I'm, I'm sure my colleagues will want to follow up on this because I'm out of time, but this is a time when the difference in 130 and 210 or 109 and 210 makes a big difference. One of the things I'm wondering, and, and we don't have time for you to answer this, but I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking here, is in a moment like this, if you're focus is chiefly on the safety of House members, and I would certainly understand that, and Mr. Stanger's is chiefly on the safety of Senate members, maybe that's a problem here where the board really can't function as a board because you have such diverse areas of immediate responsibility, but whatever happened here doesn't seem to me to be in agreement with the various time frames, and uh, I'm out of time, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you, Senator Blunt. And I wanted Senator Peters and I are going to trade off uh, chairing here with the votes. And we have a set order that all the center staff have based on a melded set of rules between the two committees. Um, and I'd like to submit for the record a written statement from the United States Capitol Police Labor Committee dated February 23rd, 2021. Thank you.